Okay, continuing from Monday, as well as Tuesday thing. Uh, this one's going to probably be a little less controversial because uh, it's just definition of terms, which I think is really important um, if you like this sort of stuff because this doesn't search well on, on, on a YouTube. Help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. One of the things I've noticed in discussing the JK Rowling thing is that people are using gender performance and gender identity as the same thing and they're not and this is a bit difficult to explain um so i'm gonna start really really simple and slightly misleading and branch up um gender performance is actions gestures appearances, fashion, makeup, hairstyles, all that stuff that we attach onto gender or sex. Um, I use the term gender because these are all constructions um, to, to sort of perform our, our gender identity. Gender identity is something completely different. It's how you think about yourself. It's, you know, who you are. That's not the same as what you believe who you are means. So in the rawest terms, this is sort of how Judith Butler, who came up with the idea of gender performativity, uh, put it. Drag queens, gender performance. A drag queen performs as a woman, but in her day-to-day -day life, she's a man. Now that's gotten a bit complicated because uh, trans cabaret performers have been welcomed into the drag scene. So some trans women perform at drag shows, but they're trans women because they're women all the time. You know, they don't take their makeup off and go to work as a man. They're a woman all the time. That's the difference. Performance you can turn on and off. Um, you know, Boy George had deliberately sort of feminine signifiers, um, but he had boy in his name, just to make it sort of clear for everybody. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, that's, that's different than somebody like Chaz Bono, who is a trans man, right? Identity and performance are not the same. Similarly, um, do not assume that all butch lesbians are secretly trans men. They're not. Um, a lot of people just don't like girly things, but they're, they're still a woman. They just ain't down with the girly things because that's performance. Identity is you refer to yourself as something and it just feels wrong. You know, it feels dishonest to you. Um, it'll, it'll be something as, as simple as, you know, you expect to see a particular thing in the mirror and it's not there. Um, or just um, what characters you tend to identify with. Um, you know, when I was a kid, there were very few female characters I connected with. Um I was as likely to connect with a character like Lionel as I was with a character like, God, I'm trying to think of a female character I identified with. Um, I like Storm from X-Men, um, but I like Beast from X-Men too. Like if you asked me as a kid which character I identified more with, it would be like Beast than Storm. But that's because I have a, I do not have a firm gender identity. Like, it's not like, it's like, if, if you push me, I'm a woman. Because I don't care. That's not common. Um, for most people, they're very bothered if people misgender them. Because it is a slight. It is a, a lack of affirmation. Um, and I mean, when I was younger, that did bother me, I think, because I was sort of sensitive about, um, you know, 
um, being not good at being a girl, not having the interests, uh, the reactions, the instincts that are normal um, for women. But do I feel male? No, I don't. You know, I, I don't. Um, and some people do who have the exact same anatomy I do. And that's real. And I, you know, I go back to this, this argument that JK Rowling is saying that people are trying to claim that gender isn't real. Um, I will not say no one is trying to claim gender is not real. Trans people are not claiming are claiming the gender's not, are, tr trans people are not claiming gender's not real, double negative bad. There are people who are, you know, gender queer or gender non-conforming, um, or, you know, people who have bespoke pronouns because they reject the entire concept of gender. Yeah, that small minority of people are saying sex and gender are not real. There is no evidence for what, they're claiming there is is clearly sexual dimorphism in humans but there are differences in the brain between it, that that factor into that sexual dimorphism and trans people's brains look more like the gender they feel they are than the gender they are anatomically assigned. And that's very compelling because again, that shows there are biological sex differences because your brain is biology too. Physiology is, is biology. People unfortunately interchange the terms biology and anatomy and, um, my late stepfather drilled that out of me because he was a physiologist. He didn't do anatomy. It would, when he'd say something about that's not bi that's not biology, that's bloody anatomy because biology is anatomy and physiology. And so when people get into this thing about, but biological sex is real. Well, yes, it is, but it's real in the brain and it's real in the physiology as well as being a thing in anatomy. And the question we have to answer as a people is do people whose physiological anatomy or their brain, sorry, physiological biology or their brain biology and their anatomical biology, those people that don't match, do they deserve dignity? And do they deserve as stress-free a life as possible? And I think when you put it that way, most people would say yes. And people just fight about anatomy as if it's some sort of be all end all for biology. And it's just not. Not if you truly understand that physiology has a lot more to do with this stuff than, than anatomy does. And let me put it this way. If you're one of these people that has never have to question this stuff, just be happy and give a little space to people who have had this struggle. You know, I, I think I'm probably kind of lucky that, um, you know, I, I'm not typical, but I don't feel out of place, you know, with, with anatomy. Um, other people do. And I guess I can connect to that more because I had, a partial struggle in that regard that, that resolved in the way that, you know, it was intended to with me. I don't, I really don't believe anybody could have pushed me or coerced me or pressured me to feel I was male. And so I, I don't really think that that kind of stuff is, it causes a lot of stress because people aren't accepting you for, for who you are, who, you know, you, you know, there are just certain things that, um, you feel you are that are there, that are ingrained, that are a part of you. Um, you know, I, I have, uh, I, I did not connect to, 
um, the religion my family practiced. It didn't work for me. Uh, you know, I had to go my own way in that regard. Then it, you know, then it turned out that, oh, my family wasn't quite as across the board Christian as I thought. <laughs> there were Jewish relatives. Um, and then there were Catholic relatives. And then there were like, it, it was far more complicated than I knew growing up. But, you know, I wouldn't have known that had I, had I not realized this, this isn't working for me, you know. Um, it's the same way if somebody is not interested or their brains don't work in that systemic way required for for computers or even designing systems at all no matter how much you train them they're never going to have a sufficient level of proficiency there has to be useful jobs for people who are visual learners who are who are you know they learn by hearing who are um you know more artistic, more logic driven, you know, there has to be different types of stuff for different types of people because you cannot force someone to be something they are not. By a certain point, our brains just sort of firm up and that's how we digest information and that's how we connect with the world. And um, that, you know, brain chemistry is real you know it's as real as physical stuff um it some people say it's even more real because you know if you lose a finger you're still a person if something happens to your brain your personality can alter radically you you become a different person in a, a lot of a lot of ways due to traumatic brain injuries um and, and so that's the difference between gender identity and gender performance. Gender performance is transient. It is, it is based on preference, yes, but they are choices we make. Like, what do I want to wear today? That's a choice. A gender identity you can't choose, right? Um, and it is you know, sometimes not appropriate to have pancake makeup and drawn on eyebrows in, in certain places, right? Certain shoes, there are just certain things that, you know, social niceties, these are all performances. A person's identity should be accepted anywhere they go. And they should not be required to pass some sort of performative litmus test to have that identity validated. Now that doesn't mean it's not difficult for people to catch up sometimes. And there has to be understanding both ways. But this idea that uh, gender identity is just costume, that trans people just want to wear their hair differently or wear different shoes, it's not just about that. It, it isn't. The reason they want to wear that stuff is to affirm a major part of who they are. It's different than say, you know, I dress like in a t-shirt and I'm wearing freaking Lululemon pants. Um, no, these are Under Armour, Under Armour, right. Um, but I wear this today. I could wear a dress and heels another day. Uh, not for a whole day, heels hurt my feet. But um, my identity doesn't change because I decided to be more overtly performatively feminine one day as opposed to another day. Does this make sense? Because this is kind of important stuff to get into if you're trying to understand where trans people are coming from and why um, this idea that anatomical processes that require a uterus being a prerequisite for womanhood hits some people so hard. And it doesn't just hit, um, it doesn't just hit trans people hard. It really hits, I know some people who were profoundly messed up because they needed um, a medically necessary uh, hysterectomy at a very young age. They 
uh, some women have a really hard time when they need a mastectomy um, because of breast cancer. Um, you know, especially before reconstruction surgery got better. Um, people really struggle. I mean, there are people who just get cosmetic surgery because they want to, it'll make them feel better. There are other people that are just desperately unhappy until they look a certain way. Um, these are not small things and these are not just performative things. These are issues of identity. And, it, you know, for some people, yeah, they can change everything. They're still not going to be happy because they're not a happy person. But for other people, when they can make the outside of them look more like what they expect it to look like, um, that, that changes their life. And that's not just a performance. So I hope that made it um, easier to understand for some people. I understand these things are difficult to deal with. And I understand that if they're, they're not personally relevant for you, it, it, it can be difficult to understand why it is so important for somebody else. Complicating this is the fact that it's not super important for everybody. You know, uh, one of the things I hear from uh, trans people in different ways, both male and female, is that if they're, you know, affirming their identity, but they're not making major, um, major physical changes, um, major cosmetic changes, they're rejected for not, you know, not looking male enough or not looking female enough. Um, you know, I know, um, other people who, they're afraid that people are going to find out because they pass too well. Uh, I, when I was running events, I had one woman ask me if it was okay to wear a dress. And it was a bit of a thing because her registration name and her legal name on her credit card didn't match. And so that's how it originally came up. And it was like, you know, my name isn't legally changed yet. So that's me. Um, you know, so she had to sort of stare her dead name in the face. And I'm like, all right, well, nobody will see that but me. All your registration forms will be, you know, your your, your name. Um, and then she was like, is it okay if I wear a dress? And I'm like, why wouldn't it be okay if you wear a dress? And she says, well, I don't look. I'm only, you know, I think it was six months in on hormones because I don't look female enough. And I said, if anybody gives you a hard time about that they'll have to deal with me and some people did ask and you know because we had that conversation i knew so i could tell them it's like look you know transitioning you know and i'm oh okay like you know people just didn't know what it was and once they knew what it was they were cool um but it was good that i could tell people some stuff because I think it was com more comfortable for everyone else involved for that. And people were like, like, I won't say they were awesome about it. They were appropriate about it. Once they knew what was going on, they were able to go, all right, this is, this is a woman. And now I know sort of how to treat her and how to refer to her and awesome. Um, you know, I, I should make it clear that this was partial cosplay event so that's part of the reason it was like is that somebody in a costume or is that no 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 okay good thing I checked um these are not easy conversations to have they're awkward some people handle them better than others this is the reality of our world and it is a marker that we are moving to a better world and it is not necessary to wear your pronouns on a name tag if you don't want to. It is not necessary to use the most up-to-date language if you don't want to. It is 
necessary for you primarily to understand that these things are real and you trying to come up with some scientific justification that makes it okay for you to not readjust to this. That's not okay because anybody who really knows, like my late stepfather did, the complexities of biology knows that it ain't just anatomy. Physiology is actually a lot more significant in certain things. I know this because I happen to have a physiologist as a step parent. Um, so uh, this was dinner table conversation. Uh, he, he was on the, the plant phycology side, uh, not, not human, but even with plant anatomy and plant physiology, he showed me how, you know, you can change the anatomy of, of various living things and the physiology is identical and classifications based on physiology are more meaningful from a scientific approach than classifications based on anatomy. Um, so we'll leave it there. Hope you like this stuff. It's dense and I don't expect a ton of traffic, but who knows? I've been wrong about this stuff before. So if you like it, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com patreon slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.